Alright guys, it's Mr. Lynch, Come back at you with another great math video. Today, Patterns of Association. Now, as always guys, before we start these videos, make sure that you are hitting like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring that notification bell so you guys can see these videos as soon as they come out. So, getting back into what we're starting with statistics. So far in our study, we've seen data sets that show different types of association between two variables, positive, negative, no association, positive means it's going up, negative means it's going down, no apparent, is flat, and nonlinear, well, we will get into that. So a positive linear association means the data is kind of going in an upwards direction, right? This is a positive slope. Negative is kind of the opposite. It's going in a downward slope. But it looks like it's straight. And then no, no apparent association is really cool. It's kind of just flat for the most part. Right? We've all seen stuff that looks like this. It's basically flat. Nonlinear is when it looks something like this and it gets positive and then it reaches a peak and then it starts getting negative so it looks something like this it just it's not in a line so the variable show linear association we can determine to be strong weak or perfect and just all I do is imagine drawing a line through the center of the points by eyeballing it and if the points are closely packed then it's strong if the points are kind of spread out spread out then we know it's weak and if the points are on a completely straight line then it is perfect clusters a cluster is just a set of points that are in a close proximity to each other so it's a set of points super close to each other and an outlier is one that really just stands out from the rest like it's either too high it's too low and it's really far away from our line so, looking at these, this, we're going to just determine this. You know, circle any clusters, a star by an outlier, in terms of whether it's positive, negative, no association, or non-linear. Now, looking at number five, I mean, if we just drew a line, yes, it would look to be negative, but this really doesn't fit a line. This looks more like something like this which would make it a non-linear association. All right, it's really coming down. Yeah, I don't care about app updates. Stop. So it's really coming down quickly, and then it starts slowly coming down, which we can see. Now, stop. Oh, these are kind of clustered together, and these two are pretty close together. But other than that, I'd say that's about it. I don't see any outliers. It looks pretty normal for a nonlinear association. Here, I would say that this is almost a perfect negative. I mean, look at this. If I pull my ruler out, I can go through every single one of those points in a straight line. This is a perfect negative association. There are no clusters. There are no outliers. It is perfect for statistics. But sadly, we don't ever get anything like that. Statistics aren't perfect because people aren't perfect. Here, I would say this is actually pretty positive. If I were to just draw a line through this like that, it looks pretty perfect. I would say this is probably an outlier here. And we've got a nice little cluster there and a nice cluster here. And a good cluster there as well. This is a, I would say, a strong positive. Because, I mean, they're really pretty close to that line of best fit. I'm mean, just eyeballing that line. They're, they're all super close. Looking at number eight, though, I mean, I you can make a case it's negative. You can make a case it's positive. I'm going to say, oops, it should not have been up, that this is a no association. And at that, it is very weak as well. Because look how spread out these points are. They're all over the place. If we get some closer things, 
then we could see an association. But with how spread out they are, I'm just saying there's no association there. Here, this is definitely positive. I'd say it's pretty weak, though. I'd say this is a weak positive. I mean, just looking, this these points here are pretty far from the line. These are pretty far from the line. I would say this is this and this one are definite outliers. And we're just clustered in here and we're clustered in there. Pretty great to see, honestly. Here, I'd say this is actually a pretty strong negative. I mean, we have an outlier. We have a few outliers, but we're pretty clustered in here and pretty close to the line for the most part. So I would definitely say this is a strong negative with two outliers. So examine the scatter plots. Determine the association, any clusters, star any outliers, and kind of give a context wherever we can. So, scatter plot below shows the temperature of a cup of tea sitting on the counter for 30 minutes, and it's sitting in a room that's about 70 degrees. So we can see here that it starts really quickly coming down in temperature, and then it slowly levels out, pretty close to 70. I'm going to say this is nonlinear. And the reason that this happens is because the way we actually determine mathematically how this works, it comes from what's called differential equations. And as you can guess, those are mainly nonlinear things. Now, what it says is the farther the distance is between, so the greater the distance, between where you are, so the greater the distance and temperature between you and the room, the quicker that temperature will come down. But the closer the distance between your temperature and the room's temperature, the slower it's going to be to get there. And now this has a lot to do with how that branch of mathematics works but really it comes down to the further the temperature is apart the quicker it's going to come down and the closer the temperatures are together the slower that temperature is going to come down and i mean you can see that right around you right if i were to put boiling water take it off and put it just out on my counter well it's going to start coming down really quickly but then it's going to kind of level out as we get closer to room temperature but let's say, you know, I've got, you know, just some water that's sitting out, and I heat it up a, a little bit. Well, it's not going to change its temperature all that quickly because it's already near that room temperature. Paradise Pool records the average daily temperature on the and the number of visitors for 18 days throughout the month. And on the 24th, admission is half off. So the average daily temperature on the day is 90 degrees. So, let's look at the association here. I'm gonna say, this looks really positive. I mean, we've got stuff down here, but as you can see, as we get more people, there are less and less days, there are less days where we have a lower temp, right? Lower temps are with lower people, and we see those higher temps with the more people we have. So I'm gonna say that's a positive and let me draw that a little more accurately. Go through about half of them. I'm going to say that's pretty strong. That is a strong positive association. Now, why do you think that is? Well, the more people, the more body heat those people are giving off, right? The more body heat those people are giving off, the more heat there is going to be in the room or in their pool. And so those people are heating up the pool. So the average temperature is going to increase with the more amount of people there are. I mean, it's just, it's how things work. The less people there are, the less body heat there is, the colder the pool will be. So the scatter plot below shows the population in millions and the number of area codes for some states in the United States. So as you can see, with the lower number of area codes, we have below 5 million people. But up here, where we have 16 area codes, we have a huge number of people. We got about 33 million 
if you were to draw a line, that is a strong positive association. Because as the number of area codes increases, the number of people increases as well. We're not seeing, you know, six area codes with 3 million people anymore. With six area codes, we're seeing about 12,000, 13,000 people. And it does change a little bit, but that's just statistics. That's how it works. But as you can see, it's a strongly positive relationship. Holly's math teacher asked her to conduct her own survey to study different types of association. So she looks at the number of pets a person has and their shoe size. Hmm. And as we can see here, there's really no association. If I were to draw a line, basically through the middle of all that data, it's going to be a flat line. There's no association. And let's think about that. <sighs> would we think that there would be an association there? I mean, does your shoe size really determine how many pets you're going to get? You're like, oh man, I've got a, I've got size 10 feet, so I've got to have more pets. No. I mean, my dad has size 9 feet, and he's got three pets unless you count the fish which puts it up at like 300 pets um but like i've got the same size feet as my dad i've got zero pets so really you wouldn't you don't go out and buy pets based on the size of your shoes and your feet don't change their size depending on the number of pets you have at home either so we wouldn't think that there would be an association there all right guys let's jump on down did i do the wrong lesson no i didn't okay we got to jump on down to 6.2 a let's find it where is it 6.2 6.2 a the line of best fit now most as i told you guys most data does not fall perfectly on a line it's very rare and it's very hard to get because people aren't perfect math is perfect statistics is not perfect perfect however if the data on a scatter plot resembles a line we can fit a line of best fit write a function and use this to solve problems and make predictions and the line that we use to represent the data is called the line of best fit and we're going to refer to the function we write of the line of best for the line of best fit as the prediction function now the most common way is to use the eyeballing technique where we draw a straight line that really just fits the data. Now when we eyeball it, we want to try and get the same number above the line as we have below the line, and as many as we can on that line. Now in 1 and 2, let's look at the data set, and let's try and draw our line of best fit, and build our function. So here, as you can see, this is a, this is a positive association. I'd say it's a pretty strong one too. This is a strong positive. So let's draw a line of best fit, pull out our ruler. I'm gonna go through the first point and I'm gonna try and go through the last point. And as we can see, that actually works out pretty well. We've got a good number on the line, some below, some above. And now let's estimate the slope and the y-intercept. So it looks like a slope of, it looks like we have a y-intercept of roughly two. And our slope is, if we go over one, up one, we get roughly one for our slope. Which means our prediction function is y equals x plus 2. So, if we plug 12 in there, we get y equals 12 plus 2, which means we get 14. And we plug 100 and we get y equals 100 plus 2, which is 102. So, what was the problem here? Oh, it didn't say. So, we can estimate that this is going to follow this trend. Over here, let's draw the line. And like I said, guys, I like to go through my first point and my last point, but that's not always the best. Um, I think that's going to probably be our best fit. Let's see. Pull the ruler away. Yeah, we got a lot on the line. We got a good number above, but we also have a good number below. That looks like a good line of fit for me. We can see that this is a strong negative. Because it's going down as we go to the right. We drew the line of best fit. Um, now let's look at the y-intercept. looks to be about 8. And our slope is down 1, right 2. So I'm going to say it's roughly a slope of negative 2. 
which means our function is y equals mx plus b, y equals negative 2x plus 8. And so if x is 12, we get y equals negative 24 plus 8, which means y equals negative 16. And when x equals 100, we get y equals negative, oh geez, not negative 100, negative 200 plus 8, which gets us a y of negative 192. Alright, that seems fair. Uh, probably won't happen though, because most of the time with statistics are y and x mean something, and you can't have, usually you won't have negative of something, but we're doing what we could, what we want to, I guess. Um, let's, do, let's try and find one that's a little bit harder. So we have a road trip, total distance traveled over an 8-hour period. So let's draw our line of best fit. Um, I know I'm going to go through 0. And honestly, I think that right there is the perfect function. I think that is our line of best fit. Because we've got a few under, a few over, mostly on. Which means our y-intercept is 0, and our slope is 60. So our function is y equals 60x. What does the slope represent? Well, if it's their time, it's their distance per time. Well, distance per time is their speed. It's the speed they're traveling. And the y-intercept is where they start from home, where they start. So after 10 hours, if they follow this trend, they're going to be approximately 600 miles away. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. As always, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you are ringing that notification bell so you guys can see these videos as soon as they come out. As always, guys, enjoy the math, and we'll see you soon.